It's a journey uh, for all of us. Um, my journey started when I was uh, sitting in the position of uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce here in Guernsey. And everyone, every week used to say to me, what are you doing about connectivity? And the initial response is, well, I'm just here as President of the Chamber. I'm here to sort of watch and observe. But actually, there's a movement in Guernsey at the time called the Dandelion Project. And they were saying, we all, as individuals, need to own problems. No one else is going to sort it out. And the other thing that they were saying in the Dandelion Project is that small communi communities are vehicles for change. They can prototype our, our ideas. Uh, they can be innovative with social uh, enterprise, uh, try new things, and you can actually change the world in small communities by experimenting and seeing through novel ideas. So um, I invited everyone I knew just to throw ideas at me. How can we solve connectivity? And some of the ideas were cable cars. Uh, can we have uh, airships? Can we have seaplanes? Um, you know, every possible method of getting from A to B. And in fact, um, we put it up in a big whiteboard and we said, right, we're going to use this, this, uh, this approach called opportunity set thinking. Look at everything and then cross things out. You have to be open-minded. So we found out, for example, that to have a cable car, you needed a mountain on Guernsey and a mountain on Jersey. So that was crossed out. We found out for airships, thanks to a study that Zeppelin New Technologies in Munich did for us, that an, an airship would work between the islands. Vertical takeoff, vertical landing, low input, cost a tenth of, of, a, of a plane to run. So this is quite promising. When can we run it? Well, for two, two months in the summer. Apart from that, okay, so we're going to cross that out as well. Um, what else have we got? And we, we, we worked our way down, down the board, and eventually we got to a fixed link. And I, I called a chap called Stephen Witham in Ramble, and I said, I know this is going to sound madness, but I, I see in the Faroe Islands that they've been building these, these tunnels, and I saw uh, you know, Ramble was, was working with the Faroe Islands. Is this a ridiculous idea, connecting the Channel Islands uh, with a tunnel? And I was adamant at the beginning that it had to be a road tunnel because it's all about independence and us in the channel lines. We love our cars. Stephen Whitman, first of all, beat me up and said, forget car tunnels, it'll never work. We haven't got the space, you know, we need safety, and it's all about speed. Okay, but is it a stupid idea? And he said, it's a challenging idea, but it's absolutely not stupid when, when we look at what we're doing in the Nordics. And um, it came down at the time between... Can we do this using um, excavation techniques that they use in the Nordics and the Faroe Islands? Because they do these things really, really low cost. I mean, some of the cost points I'm going to be asking uh, the engineers about. You know, what's, what's the price per kilometre? Uh, these are key numbers that the audience here need to hear. And what we could see was potentially a very low cost tunnel or a very expensive tunnel, depending on whether you're using, you know, um, like a channel tunnel type uh, tunnel boring machines we can't possibly see that being viable all these excavation techniques which we seen as being very cheap and um, and so it was until uh, a couple of years ago I went to the World Tunneling Association in Copenhagen and I bumped into Arrol and I said to Arrol can you use these excavation techniques in the channel lines to go this distance and Arrol said you know what we're going through wet tunnels the whole time we're going through all sorts of different types of rock and I was so excited uh, to hear that actually what we're talking about here seems to be in the bounds of knowledge and everyday activities that you do in the Nordics. And what we need to do next is we need to cross this knowledge chasm between our world, where these ideas seem ridiculous, and their world, where what we're doing seems ridiculous. We have to take their normality and make it our normality. And we can see massive benefits for the tunnel. So... Um, what's the vision? Um, we've got growing challenges. We've got a vulnerable tourism sector. Tourism has been in decline in Guernsey and Jersey um, since the 2000s. We're reliant on the finance industry. We're subscale on everything we do. We've got an aging population such that we might have to increase tax rates above 50% over the next 15 to 20 years. If we have to do that, the channel owners are not viable and we'll have to switch off because we're not going to be competitive with the global markets. It's the same in Jersey, 
it's the same in Guernsey. Aging population are not going to make the Channel Islands viable. We've got a narrow tax base, we've got a finite workforce, we've got housing shortages and we've got high costs of everything. And over the last 20 years, GDP growth has been increasingly elusive. So how do we find, how do we create a vibrant economy, not just one that's ticking along on the, on, on the bottom of the barrel? We have to create a really vibrant and strong economy. And what we've seen in the Faroe Islands is that the tunnels have created economies of scale. We've seen, and Taita, we look forward to hearing from you, that they've doubled their GDP over 10-year periods just by making it easy and effortless to get from A to B. Now, these are things that we need to learn from. Us Normans have been really good at adopting ideas from around the world throughout time. We've done amazing things. We built the longest uh, breakwater uh, as a global leading project in Alderney. We joined the north of Guernsey with the south of Guernsey to create one big island. We built huge defensive structures on the Channel Islands from Gory Castle in Jersey to actually sucking up 10% of Germany's concrete in Western Europe. You know, we have been you know, big on engineering throughout our lives. And now's not the time to stop. And I just want to leave this thought with you that uh, humans are from a genus called Homo. Now, whether you're a Neanderthal, whether you're a Homo sapien, there's a key point about Homo. And if you ask an archaeologist, what's the difference between an ape and a, a Homo, a human, be different species? They'll say, well, if you look at the fossil record, you'll find that humans were shaping stone. So what I'm going to say to you today is, shaping stone is core to what it means to be a human, be it making the Dehu Domen, be it making a house, building tunnel. These are all things that we can see in the archaeological record as being core to what it means to be human. And what I'm talking to you today about is being human and addressing problems by shaping rock. So the opportunity is about speed. There's a big relationship between demand and speed. If we can connect St Peterport to St Helier with a train that goes faster than 100 miles an hour, we'll be able to get from St Peterport to St Helier in 15 minutes. We'll be able to get from Jersey to Coutanche in 20, and we access effectively another Channel Island. They've got space, they've got cheap housing, they've got unemployment, they need economic stimulus. And there's a population of 70,000 and a GDP of two, uh, uh, 2 billion euros, and we go out 60, million, uh, 60 minutes and we're hitting Con. And there we've got a population of 1.5 million, 42 billion pounds of GDP. We go out a little bit further and we've caught all of Lower Normandy and we've caught 3 million people. And that's why this project is called Connect 3 Million. We want to connect 3 million people in Lower Normandy to us. We want to create cultural vibrancy. And it's all about speed. So we want to enrich trade and tourism, diversify the economy, greater connectivity, achieve critical mass between the islands. One of the questions that you guys are asking already on Slido is, why would Jersey want to connect to Guernsey? And so, uh, so ooh, thank you. Uh, so, you know, connecting Guernsey and Jersey will create a critical mass in government services and businesses as well. We can grow our tax revenue by collecting more foreign rev revenues. We can access a, a commuting population in France and we can alleviate housing and we can increase our GDP. Basically, we can make the Channel Islands vibrant and sustainable for the next 200 years. That's the goal. It's not about us. It's not even about our children. It's about building something for our grandchildren, just as our forefathers have done before us with a harbour connecting the North Island to the South Island. It's all been about thinking about the long-term future. So <clears throat> I'm just going to whip through these, these next slides very quickly, but we've got to make some pertinent points. Everyone's asking, how much is it going to cost? The initial indications are, now, I presented ranges of numbers before, and everyone obviously reports the highest number possible. But the key thing you need to walk away with today is that it's looking like there's hard rock between the islands and hard rock between Jersey and France, although no one knows for absolute certain, so we have to set that out. If we are looking at hard rock, and we can use these techniques, even if it's wet rock, 
um, we could be talking about numbers in the region of a billion pounds. Um, so if we are talking numbers in, a, in the region of a billion pounds, we're not talking about tunnel boring machines, we're not talking about the channel tunnel, we're talking about simple, fit for purpose tunnels as, as our, our Nordic experts have been telling us. And um, here's a thought. Uh, Gibraltar and Spain, there's about 10,000 vehicles, 36,000 people a day crossing over the Campo de Gibraltar, Gibraltar border. So Gibraltar's got a, a GDP of about 2.7 billion. Uh, Guernsey and Jersey combined have a 9 billion pound economy. So if we're thinking about movements into and out of the islands, I would suggest um, that it wouldn't be unreasonable to find 24,000 people using the tunnel a day. And, and it wouldn't also be unreasonable to spend 30 quid uh, to use the tunnel as a return. So what I'm saying in very, very simple mathematics, and this isn't a complicated traffic modelling exercise, this is really making the point that tunnels are not costs. They're assets and they generate revenue. They generate revenue that you can tax. They generate revenue which pays for debt. This isn't like a hospital. Um, this is an asset generating income. So if you could pay £30 uh, to travel between Guernsey and Jersey or return, so that's £15, whatever, we're talking in the region of £263 million uh, income in year one. And if we had average or below average rates of growth, and we've seen from tighter slides that their growth rates have ranged between 7 uh, to 12% per annum, I'm going to say let's assume 6% growth, then as an illustration, so this isn't like a, a magic mathematical model, this isn't a you know, detailed traffic modelling, I'm just making the point here with simple numbers. Over 10 years, you could be talking about £3.5 billion worth of income. Don't dwell or get angsty about these numbers, this is just an illustration to get the point over that tunnels generate income. So we've got to do a pre-feasibility phase, we've got to get into feasibility, and we've got to do detailed tender and design. These are the key next steps. And we need to get Guernsey and Jersey working closer together. Ideally, we would have a Guernsey and Jersey group working together to scope out what the next steps would look like. And we really need, a, ideally, a, a tunnelling corporation, which is Pan Channel Islands, uh, to approach this together. This is what we'd like to see. And certainly when we uh, presented this in Jersey uh, yesterday, I did get a raised eyebrow, Guernsey and Jersey working together. This is exactly what we're talking about. And if you want to be big, you have to start thinking big. And in summary, I want to start by thanking everyone on the uh, Connect 3 million group. Uh, Rollo, Laura, uh, Bella from uh, Unity, thank you. And I want to thank Sally Diamond, and Matthias Holmes, who's based in Cambridge in our economics team. I also want to thank uh, Chris Brock for his input. Um, a lot of work, a lot of work has gone into this over a long period of time. And we need to take people with us on this journey that we think this is in the realms of reality, not fantasy. We think there's going to be massive benefits for the economy. Um, so what next? It'll be ambitious but doable. Similar things have been doing in other places. It'll be revenue generating and top up the economic benefit, opening up uh, finance options. So it is a challenge, but we think it's doable. Um, and we've got to commit to investigating it properly. We have to send a signal to the financial markets that we're not just flipping around on this. We have to do this with seriousness of intent. And obviously, as we've been talking about in, in public spaces, if Jersey goes on to start taking core samples and Guernsey's not on board, we're sending a signal to the markets. So I want to see Guernsey and Jersey talking to each other with seriousness of intent, putting money on the table, sharing the risks between each other to make this activity happen and to send a signal to the marketplace that actually we can do it. We're a safe pair of hands.